Hello, greetings to you on this snowy Sunday afternoon. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon on Sunday, January 14th. Um, you can see that I'm bundled up, keeping warm. My computer says it's minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit now, and the wind chill is much lower than that. You can see my um, living room window reflected in my china hutch. I've been, I'm able to look out of it, and it is snowing right now, and it's supposed to snow until about 4 o'clock this afternoon. So thank you for your patience and wisdom and not having church this morning, so I didn't have to get out of this. Um, we are going to talk, I'm going to go ahead and give you the sermon that I would have given this morning. Um, it's about Nathaniel. We're following the lectionary with that. So the reading today um, for the sermon is John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Um, a few years ago, Steve and I took a trip and we went to Yellowstone National Park, and I've heard some of you talking that you've, you know, gone to the same place. And while we were there, we saw some geysers and hot springs and places where hot boiling water just came up out of the ground. It's one thing to hear other people talk about them or see pictures or videos, but to really get their full effect of what they are like, you have to experience them for yourself. And kind of like the Chiefs game last night, you know, that was played out in the bitter cold. Um, you know, we could watch it on TV and be thankful we did that in the warmth of our homes. But, you know, to get the full effect of the game, yeah, you did have to be there. When early explorers first went to the Yellowstone area, they came back with reports of the geysers and hot springs and such, but people did not believe them. They thought they were just fantastic stories that people made up. They didn't believe it because they'd never seen anything like that before. So they didn't experience it for themselves. So sometimes I watch shows on the Food Networks, um, one with Guy Fieri in it, and he goes around the country and tries out different um, restaurants, and they call it diners, dive-ins, and um, dives. It's kind of interesting to see the different foods and places he goes, and he tries to describe what the food tastes like, but unless you can actually taste it, you don't get the full experience. In fact, Steve and I, when we go on trips, we kind of look at those things ahead of time and try to hit some of the same restaurants, which is evidently the purpose of the whole series, to get people to eat at those restaurants. But with those restaurants, you not only have to see it, you have to smell and taste it. So in the passage today, Philip is asked by Jesus to follow him. Philip, in turn, goes and finds Nathaniel and tells them, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus the son of Joseph from Nazareth. <coughs> Nathaniel is skeptical. He's not sure, and he says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? To which Philip says, Come and see. Nathaniel has to experience Jesus for himself. I remember at the beginning of one of the Muppet movies, Kermit the Frog and Fonzie the Bear are riding in a hot air balloon. The opening credits are going by, and uh, Fonzie says, Why do they have to show all the people's names? Kermit replies, Everyone has a family. In other words, the names going by in the opening credits don't mean a lot to most people, but it will to the family of the person whose name is in the credits. And they do say, and that worked with your former pastor, Ben, 
that there's no such thing as a small part in like a play or a production. Um, ben usually got fairly small plays in things or else, you know, like the, um, not the leading character, but the supporting actor. And, you know, but, you know, he had, to, he was very pleased to play the parts that he did have and, you know, never felt like he really had to be the lead man. Nathaniel is only mentioned here in the first chapter of John and again later in the list of the disciples in J John chapter 21. Since Nathaniel isn't mentioned in the other Gospels, it's thought he could have been either Matthew or Bartholomew. Sometimes people have more than one name, so who knows, you know, might have had a nickname or something. In a lot of the old westerns, there were people that would show up again and again not having a major role they were character actors, and that's kind of the role Ben always played in things. They made a living playing those smart parts, small parts on TV and in the movies, and nobody remembers their names, but they had a role to play. And so you'll see those people and say, yeah, I saw that person in that other show, but I can't remember their name. Philip also was not one of the disciples that got a lot of recognition, but he did have a good example for us. He gave us a good example. He found Nathaniel and told him about Jesus, and he didn't go into a whole lot of details. He just said to him, come and see. We can tell people about Jesus. They can read books about Jesus. They can read the Bible and learn about Jesus, but they need to experience Jesus for themselves. They need to come and see, and that's easy to say, but how do we do that? How can people see Jesus? One way is that they can see Jesus in us. And we've talked about that a lot of times in sermons, previous sermons about how we can do things for people. And then if people ask us, why are we doing this for them? We can say, because God loves you. And that can hopefully lead to a person coming into a relationship with God and Jesus Christ. And what we say, what we do, how we act, we can be a witness for the Lord. So I think I've talked about one time before, too, that when Steve and I were back at K-State, we were part um, of Campus Crusade for Christ. And one way we tried to reach people for Jesus was an, um, an I Found It campaign. And people would have bumper stickers on their cars with the words, I Found It. They would wear buttons on their shirts that said, I Found It. There were billboards on signs saying, I Found It. And it was supposed to give people curiosity up, and they would ask, what would you find? And the answer would be, new life in Jesus Christ. And so it did give people an opportunity to share their faith. But as soon as people discovered that what the answers were, a few time, you know, after a few people got the full answer to the question of what was found, then the word would spread, and people would quit asking. Um... And if a person with an I Found It sticker on their car cut you off or drove like a maniac, it didn't really work because people already knew, oh, they're part of this group that's saying they found Jesus Christ and then they're not driving very good. Um, if they thought that basically that the, if the person with the I Found It button on their shirt was a jerk, it didn't work. So how we live does make a difference. Um, if, however, a person with the I Found It button on the shirt lived their faith in such a way that people notice that Christ is in their life, they might just ask about what they found. So we're told, when Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. So this tells us something about Jesus, that he sees what is in a person's heart. Nathaniel asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Fig trees were planted around houses to provide shade so that people could get someplace that was cool during the heat of the day. So we don't know for sure Nathaniel might have even gone there to pray. So regardless, Jesus saw him there. Then Nathaniel makes a declaration, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. And it doesn't seem like it took a lot to convince Nathaniel of who Jesus is. For other people, it might take a little more time, and then some never come to believe. They have to experience Jesus for themselves, and they have to come and see. 
It is that way for people in our time as well. Some come to faith fairly easily, others may take some time, and still others will never believe. You know, there's a, the Bible story about, you know, the good soil and the hard soil. And, you know, some people, even though the seeds are planted, um, faith never grows. Philip told Nathaniel, come and see, and he saw. Jesus told Nathaniel, do you believe because I told you I saw you in the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. As time goes on, Nathaniel will see Jesus perform miracles, heal the sick, the blind, and the lame. You'll see Jesus walk on water and bring people that are dead back to life. And But also, eventually, he will see Jesus crucified, and but also see him after the resurrection. So we'll all see Jesus in our own way. We'll all experience Jesus either through knowing within our heart by what we read in the Bible or by seeing him in others. Nathaniel said to Philip when he first heard about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we've heard the same thing about Southeast Kansas. Um, one time, a fellow pastor said that Pittsburgh is an oasis in an intellectual wasteland. And I, you know, Steve and I didn't like that because he was putting down the rest of us in Southeast Kansas. And, but, you know, what eventually happened to him, charges were later brought up against him for inappropriate, um, um, behavior and he left the ministry. So, you know, I guess what goes around comes around. The thing is, God can use us no matter where we come from or what our situation is like. So another way God could use us today is that if we pray um, for all the people that have to get outside to take care of our animals and such. I have um, been seeing some postings on Facebook about people going outside and having to do that, and some some unsafe things have happened. Nobody that I know of has gotten hurt yet, but it is very dangerous out there. And we also might pray for the homeless people. You know, because of insurance reasons and such, you know, many churches have not been able to open up their churches for homeless people. Um, there are a few people, places that have been, and in Crawford County anyway, all the public libraries are going to be open um, that they can go there. So let's say a quick, quick prayer as we close. Lord, I just thank you that we could have this time together right now and just help these words bless someone and just be with all the people that do have to be out in the weather, keep them safe, and also we pray for the home people, those people that they get the care they need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.